Hey everyone, I'm Delana Burns and I'm here tonight with you for the Flying Unicorn. And I want to share a page that I made using um, Pion Design papers and some gorgeous Prima resin and Prima flowers. Just kind of give you a quick close up while I've got the camera pulled up of the project. And um, just before I lower the camera, just so you know, a couple of announcements. Go over to Flying Unicorn store and check out the um, the actual products I'm using tonight. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. The products I'm using tonight, I'll just got them in the store. What she has left for 10% off. So take advantage of that. Um, if you like the page and want to recreate it or, or just like the product that's on the page, 10% um, off until next week. Uh, next Wednesday, same time, 8 p.m., Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Song will be with you, so be sure and tune in then. Um, but for now, I want to go ahead and pan down and give you another look at the layout and go ahead and get started. So bear with me just one minute while I kind of turn you around. Okay, get this turned around and give you a look at the page that I'm going to be creating for you tonight. You can kind of see it's got lots of layers of flowers and um, I've used uh, some of the butterflies. I fussy cut some of the butterflies and there's a ton of little gold microbeads on here, the 13 arts microbeads and um, just lots of Prima flowers and beautiful Prima resin word um, love and uh, I've done a couple of techniques on that but you can just kind of see the layers I'm gonna try to move this slow so we keep our focus but you can kind of see the layers the background here has got two layers of stenciling I've used two different Prima stencils with some modeling paste and I also sprinkled a little more of the micro beads around so you can kind of see um, the different layers of paper as well so just going to kind of lay this to the side and get started with the papers first. Our background paper, our very background paper there is going to be this paper here. I'm going to grab my trimmer as well. It's going to be this paper here. Um, this is the Paris Flea Market by Pion Design. And I'm hoping that these papers don't drive the camera crazy. But looks like they might let's grab something to try to get this focused see if we can pull the focus back in bear with me just a second I'm just gonna grab this modeling paste and see if that won't if that won't pull the design let's just kind of leave this I'm hoping this focus is not going to go, not going to go crazy. Okay, it looks like it's back. So what I'm going to do is just um, show you the papers. This is the very back paper that we're going to be using. Next, I'm going to layer this striped paper on top of that. And then I'm going to layer this um, sort of pink background. It's got kind of a grid in it. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that'll be the next layer. So I'm just going to start by kind of cutting these papers up to the size that I need them with my trimmer. So bear with me just a second. Go ahead and cut the little selvage off of this background one. And I'm going to show you too how I've used some lightweight chipboard uh, in the background to help with the actual modeling paste so that we don't get so much warping with our paper once we've added modeling paste and different things. I use a lightweight chipboard to sort of help me with that. So what I'm going to do is just give a quick measure to my background here. My stripe paper is going to measure 10 and a half by about 10 and a half. So grab it and trim it to 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Do that on both sides so we kind of get a square. OK, 
Okay, so you can kind of see that's just going to kind of layer in our background there. This um, pink piece here is going to be a, just a little bit smaller, about ten and a quarter. And just be sure I don't need anything from the back there. So we'll cut it about ten and a quarter by ten and a quarter. I just wanted it a little smaller, not too much smaller than the um, one right in behind it. And that one's going to layer just about there. The next piece I've got here, I've already worked on a little bit because it had printed on it right at the top here these butterflies. So I just went in first and just trimmed the butterflies off because I want to actually use these for an embellishment. So I'll just lay those to the side. I also want to use these little stamps here. You can kind of see they're just little little decorative stamps. And um, so I want to be sure when I cut this that I cut those off so that I can use those as an embellishment. But really quick, I want to just measure. That one is going to be about 10 by 10. So I just want to give it a quick measure turn it around this way and just be sure I'm clearing those stamps when I do make my cut so we'll cut this one about 10 by 10 go ahead and lay our little stamps to the side until we're ready to use that so got our top piece ready as well so you can see how these papers are kind of going to just layer here like this. So the next thing I want to do with um, with all of these papers um, is add between a little thin sheet of this card. Well, I guess this is like a little chipboard. I got this at Hobby Lobby, and um, I think you can get it at Michael's. I'm going to raise the camera just a little bit so that I'm sure to be getting everything in here. Just as that, we'll be able to get the entire the entire page in here. So I think that helped. Um, but this thin little uh, chipboard I got in a package of like 25 sheets at Hobby Lobby. It was like $5.99 for 25 sheets. Uh, really, really flimsy. So I'm going to cut it down um, to about nine and a half inches. I want it smaller than um, the pages so that it's not not showing. And I may even actually um, go smaller than that. I'm actually going to cut it down to about eight because I'm going to roll these edges and I don't want it to show when I roll the edges. So I'm going to cut, cut it down to about eight inches square. And you could, you could do it the nine inches and then just cut your corners away. But I just wanted to have a little bit of body to the background of this. I'm just going to glue this down. And you'll see when I do the masking, it's going to help keep it from warping. Um, I It drives me crazy when the paper warps. I don't know why I'm not a fan, but um, I don't like to deal with warping. So we'll just glue this down. It just gives a little more stability there. The next thing I'm going to do with these next couple of sheets of paper, since we're not going to, sh the centers are not going to show, we're just kind of going to be able to see the outsides. I'm going to cut these insides out. I don't like to waste paper. Um, I might want to use these as um, a crop piece behind my photo or something like that. So I'm just going to go in and chop this out. And I know we should always buy two sheets of every paper that we love, but I still don't like to waste even when I do that. So both of these, I'm going to just randomly chop out their centers. But I want to be sure to leave enough on the edges, of course, um, to show. So I'm leaving an inch and a half to two inches of the outside there. And you can see I am just like chopping this out. It's not going to show at all. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is the actual chipboard too. I'm going to add another piece to the back of this striped as well, just to give it a little bit of stability where I've cut off the um, 
where I've cut the center out of it, I want it to be nice and glued down. So just real quick, I'm going to cut this piece down to about 8x8 eight eight as well. And it's pretty thin, so the, um, the trimmer does a really good job cutting it away. Just going to kind of lay these pieces out of my way for just a minute. And just right in. What I'm going to do is glue it on top so that then I can glue down this pink sheet. And just going to kind of offset it there. But just so that we've got some stability there in their center. And again, it's going to help with the actual warping. Um, so I'm going to add glue around just around the little hole that I created here. Lay down the chipboard. There's a little bit of glue um, kind of, you know, out away from the chipboard that you've added. That's okay. It, um, it'll be just fine. I want to go in before I glue these together and add some brown ink. This is a dark, it's dark, dark bark. I think the name is just about gone. Um, off. It's just about rubbed away, but just kind of ink the edges. It's going to help with your dimension, dimensional look to add the ink to the edges. Um, somebody text, text me if there's a problem hearing me or anything, if I'm out of camera range or whatever. I feel like I'm working kind of fast here. Just going to ink the edges of all these papers real quick. Give it a really quick ink. Make sure we get these right side up. Okay, I think I can move my cut my trimmer, so I'm going to move it off to the side. I'll grab it if I need it again, but for now I think I can move it. So get everything lined back up. So what I'm going to do is just kind of offset this striped paper just a little bit. I just um, kind of wanted it offset, wasn't too concerned about everything being straight. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the back. Stay the, Keep the glue away from your edges because I'm going to roll those up just a little bit. So just kind of offset this just a little bit. I just want to be sure I've got this paper right set up. I think there's some printing on this. Yeah, this is the, this is the up So because there is a little bit of faint printing on that. So what I'm going to do is just kind of grab these edges and pull them up. And once I get all those layers there, I'm going to kind of roll those. But for now, just kind of grab them and pull them up. Add some ink to the edges of this piece as well. Get a little flimsy when you cut the hole in the center, but um, it just really gives you a little bit of extra paper to kind of play with on your layout without cutting into a an entire 12 by 12 sheet later. So. That's why I like to kind of gut them. I'm going to go ahead and grab this piece as well. Go ahead and add my ink. I've done a few things ahead. We're going to be using some uh, glossy accents. And uh, so I've done a little bit of that ahead because it takes forever to dry. So I'm not going to have quite as much to do as, as what I started with with this layout. So the next thing I'm going to do is just add a little glue kind of around the, the uh, chipboard here. And this chipboard, is, it's thin like uh, sometimes you get it when you get um, boxes in the mail with like paper. You'll get that thin piece of chipboard in there. Uh, that's the kind of chipboard this is. It's just really sturdy, but it's really thin. So um, it just works really well. You can kind of see, again, I'm kind of offsetting that one as well. And I'm just kind of rolling these up, preparing them to, to be rolled later. So just kind of turn those up as you're, as you're working. Next thing I'm going to do is grab my, stop, my top sheet here. I'm going to kind of lay those to the side. I'm going to grab my mask. And the masks that I have used is... Uh, number 960476 it's called halftone pretty sure alda still has this one in the store uh, i looked this afternoon and i'm pretty sure that one's still there 
I don't think this one is there, but a lot of you probably have it in your stash. It's this um, sort of distressed harlequin type shape. I don't have the number uh, to this written down. Um, pretty sure Alda had it in the list, um, so maybe Cynthia can grab that number for y'all. But anyway, this is the first one we're going to use. Going to grab my modeling paste. I just got the Prima modeling paste and my little spatula. And I'm going to just kind of lay this across the top here, not really worried um, whether it's really... It, I'm going to kind of straighten it, but it doesn't have to be absolutely perfectly straight. Not really worried about that. And I'm going to pretty much cover the entire thing just really quickly, though. I'm not going to not going to spend a lot of time getting in all the little nooks and crannies. Um, just want to kind of give it a quick coat. And this is where I love that chipboard that's attached to this already because it's going to keep this from warping um, as bad as it normally does because normally it just wants to roll and that drives me crazy. So just going to quickly do this I don't want it real thick I just really want the pattern to be back there and it's going to be subtle because it's it's of course um, going to dry sort of opaque but in person it just adds tons of dimension um, and it just makes it a really pretty look so you can kind of see it's all over. Let's throw, lay that over to the side. I should have brought a pan of water. I forgot. So what I want to do real quick is dry this up. And we've got one more one more stencil to use. So I hope the dryer is not going to drive y'all crazy. Um, this one stays pretty quiet. And it is going to roll a little bit on the edges as I'm drying. But we're going to roll the edges anyway. So not too worried about that. The more cardboard you add to the back or the more chipboard that you add to the back, um, the less rolling you're going to get. Had we added chipboard all the way to the edges, uh, you wouldn't be getting this sort of rolled effect here right now. Make sure my computer doesn't go to sleep. It's trying to go dark. See if I can see. Hey, Jean. See if I can see who's here. Did I say hey to Robbie? Hey, Robbie. Hey, Lainey. I think I said hello to Janelle. I've ordered another gun because this heat tool already is starting to kind of slow down. I haven't had it for that long, but it's already acting like it's it wants to stop working. So um, if it stops in the middle of the show, I'm going to have to grab a hairdryer because my other heat tool has not arrived yet. Okay, that's that's dry enough. So what I'm going to do is just kind of kind of shape that back out, and you can kind of see where where the chipboard is. It's pretty flat, and uh, it's just kind of curling a little bit on the edges. So the next thing I want to do is just in a few places I want to add this Harlequin um, diamonds here, and I just want to add a few, just sort of across the top and. Um, down the sides. I don't want to don't want to add a lot. Just a little bit, so that um, we have just a little bit more detail. So, just going to grab a few of these. Grab a couple of them right here. And if you kind of go over into another one, that's not a problem. I'm going to grab this one right here. Come on down here and add one. I'm not going to show a lot because you know we've got that big cluster of flowers and all that too that's on this page so you won't need a lot just want to kind of pick it up and reposition it here add one more right about there and then I may come down and maybe add one right here just right under it I want to get a little bit of these little distressed areas as well, too, just for a little extra interest. So that's that's all I want to add for that. Let's go back in here and add just a few little distressed, few little distressed faces. 
here and there. So that's all we're going to do to that. Put that stencil to the side and grab a wipe and clean up our spatula. Okay, just clean our spatula up and grab our dryer and give these a good dry and I'll close the lids while this is drying. It won't take but just a minute to dry these up and we can kind of move on. Another little trick when you're drying, if you'll kind of dry from underneath, if you are getting some warping, drying it from underneath and kind of going with that sort of warped effect, it sort of helps. And all this is doing is kind of giving us more tone on tone background, kind of like what's already printed on the paper. But um, in person, it adds lots of personality and lots of texture to your page. So it makes a huge difference to kind of take the time to, to do this. Take one more second. We should be good. Yeah, we're good. It dries really quick. So you can kind of see we did get a little bit of warping on our edges, but not nearly what we would have gotten had we not used our cardboard. So now I'm going to grab the page and really quick just sort of shape it back. It could probably use a little bit more drying time, but not going to worry about that. I'm going to add some glue. Just be sure not to go all the way to the edge because we do want to roll these edges. Just kind of lay this down. I'm going to give it another quick dry because we've got a few places that are just not quite dry. So once you've glued it down, you can sort of help the warping by sort of rolling it in the, in the direction that you need it to prevent some of that. To roll these up. Okay, so that's that. Now I just want to kind of kind of get it in shape and I want to roll the edges just a little bit. Just sort of take your fingers and give it a give it a nice little roll. Just continue to manipulate it. I'm going to go in with a little bit of glue right here so that's not sticking up so obvious there. And you can always do that since we're not going with the glue to the edge. Then as you need it, you can kind of add it. So that's what we're going to kind of do with that. The next thing I'm going to do is show you this chipboard that I used. I used this Too Crafty chipboard. I'll lay our page off to the side for a minute. And um, there was two in this package, so I just used the one. I also did a few of these little butterflies that I cut out of the paper. Remember this paper that I cut the back, saved the butterflies and the little um, little stamps. I've got these butterflies and what I did is, let me grab one that I didn't finish. What I did was add some um, glossy accents to these butterflies. I cut them out, I inked their little edges, and I added a little glossy accents. So let's just grab one. don't know where the one is. I pre-cut, so I'll just grab one real quick and cut it out. I can do this really quickly. Just kind of want to just cut it out. I'm not so worried about his little antennas. I'm just getting just getting his wings, the kind of the pretty colored part of him. I'm not worried about whether I'm being real careful or I'm going to ink the edges. So it doesn't matter. Just do this quickly. So it's not so time consuming. Uh, I like to fussy cut. I like to sit and watch TV or sit on my porch or 
whatever and fussy cut so next thing I want to do is grab the brown ink and any brown ink will really do um, just kind of a dark colored brown just kind of ink his edges up and then what I did is I just took the glossy accents and I'm going to do this on a piece of this little, I'm just going to grab a piece of this cardboard and add a little just a just a little dot of glue behind him make sure he's not totally glued down because you're going to want to pull him up and get your glossy accents um, make sure you don't have a clog you do not want your glossy accents to explode so if you haven't used it in a while be sure to use a pen to kind of unclog um, if you've ever had an explosion from one of these little bottles it's not pretty so just then go in and completely cover this little butterfly with glossy accents. Just going to cover the entire little butterfly with a pretty, not a, not a really thick coat, but a pretty even, consistent coat. Okay, and you can kind of see, I'll show you. Can you kind of see, see it's like totally totally covered in the glossy accents and then just sit that to the side to let it dry and what you're going to get is a little flexible um, kind of an epoxy little embellishment by doing that is that not the cutest thing um, and it, it'll bend you can sort of bend it and put it in flight um, the next thing I want to do I've got these little gold micro beads so what I want to do is grab my butterflies and I'm using the micro beads on a little piece of I've got like a Tupperware top and I've got a piece of felt this I figured out this is sort of the easiest way for me to keep these beads from going all over the place the felt catches them and then I can just kind of roll them back into the um, roll them back into the Little container so what you want to do is take the glossy accents again all of these have been done and they've been dried and you want to just add a little add a little string right up the center of each butterfly just a little dab all the way up their little center their little bodies and that's on every one of them and we're going to go in with the micro beads I am loving using the glossy accents with the micro beads because it grabs them and holds them. They do not shift. It holds them well. So what I'm going to do is just go in now and just drop a few. And these are the 13 Arts Gold Microbeads. I'm just going to kind of drop them. And then in a minute I'm going to shake them off. But you can see the beads are pretty contained on this felt. They don't roll everywhere off into the floor and all over my table and all that if the if they're on the felt so that's about all we need just kind of give them a shake and you can lift them because their little wings are dry so just want to kind of give them a shake and move them off to the side let that dry you can kind of push it in to give it a nice little straight shape with your fingernail just kind of push them in and be sure that you've got them all covered. Just grab a few more. Be sure it's all covered. But just gives it a really pretty little center. Can you kind of see see that how it creates that? I just really do wish I could get this to show up. Can you kind of see that? It just gives it a nice little epoxy tight finish with the little gold beads running up its little body it's just a really pretty effect and uh, it's just paper and just about everybody has the glossy accents so it makes a pretty inexpensive embellishment as well so the next thing I want to do is grab my my little chipboard and I'm going to grab first the a gray ink I've got a um See if I can tell what this is called. This is called Attic Dust. This is a Prima Chalk Edger. And I want to go in first with kind of a kind of the gray color. And 
and I need to be sure that I'm doing this on the right side as to what direction I used it. So let's see. Uh, and of course, I was doing the wrong side. So let me turn her over just a little bit on the back side now that we've done both sides. That's okay. Just add a little bit of ink on that side. And then I want to grab a dark pink color. This is a vintage pink. And go in with the vintage pink. And you don't have to get it all over. You're going to pretty pretty well saturate it. But since you've added that gray, it's kind of nice for the gray to kind of be peeking through in a few areas. Just add that pink. And they kind of mix, and it helps that helps that color when it's mixed as well. Sort of a silvery color under that pink. So you can kind of see it's it's pretty splotchy. If you can see if I add this here, it's pretty splotchy on there, but um, it's going to be under our our floral arrangement. And we're also going to add some micro beads to um, to this as well. And I'm going to use the glossy accents. I have used so many things adding these beads, and um, I don't like the sound of, of that grinding when you mix it with the matte gel. I'm not I'm not a fan of that sound. So I decided that I would try the glossy accents and just kind of see if um, it would hold them and it does. They just they grab they grab hold to this glossy accent and um, they stay very well. And you can do a pretty thick coat or you can do a thin coat. And I'm not going to do it all over, just, just in some random places on this. And once you do your floral arrangement, if you see that you need some in other areas, you can always go back in and add more. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to kind of wing it here and add a few, add it to a few areas. And then I'll see when I'm working with my flowers, if I, if I want more or and if I want less, I can always go in and rub a few off. Um, it's pliable for a while because it stays wet for a while. So once I get this all on, I'm going to go in with the beads and you'll see. Um, you'll see how quick they, they kind of stick and they're kind of there. So what I'm going to do is just sort of shake these over the top of this and I love this idea of putting this on this felt because they are not jumping all over the room okay, you can kind of see as I'm nearing the end of my little bottle here and I've just about emptied my bottle out but what I'm going to do is go back and gather these up and um, Put them back in the little jar when I'm done. Just be sure you've got good coverage on everything. You can just kind of go in and give it a shake. But can you see how that they're just kind of piled up there and it's got such good coverage? And since you've covered it, with the beads, it's all covered. It's You can just about immediately start kind of working with it. As long as you don't rub to rub it away, um, they're pretty much going to stay. So I can um, just lay this to the side. And when I'm, when I'm ready, I can um, start adding my flowers and things. But you can see, since we have it on the felt, you just can kind of roll it to the center of your felt. And then right back into your right back into your little jar. So you kind of see it goes right back in there. And I've got a few left, but I'll take care of that once the show's over. But anyway, another little easy step maybe to keep that to keep your beads, not to waste your beads. Okay, the next thing I want to do really quick is cut out a few of these stamps. I'm just going to go in really quick and cut these out. And I want to make them a little jagged um, on the edges. I don't want to cut them really straight. So I'm just going to kind of twist and, and bend my scissors kind of in and out and 
cut those a little jagged not you don't want perfection with these just going to be a little extra uh, embellishment on our page and again it's just a very inexpensive little embellishment that you can use just going to grab a few more just kind of cut these out we're going to ink their little edges and they're going to be little embellishments um, it's going to be pretty quick to put the page together we've done most of the We've done most of the prep work. I did a little fussy cut in the head, and um, by doing those butterflies ahead, we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna be able to finish this up pretty quickly. So just kind of cut that out. Then just kind of wipe our mess away. Push everything back out of the way. Okay. Then we want to grab some ink and. A little ink. Just you can kind of ink two at a time if you want. If you get a little extra ink on some, that's not a problem. So kind of lay these to the side. You could always put the uh, glossy accents on these as well. I did not do that, but that is definitely something you could do if you wanted. Next thing I want to do is get my is get my word ready. My resin. This is the Prima resin. This is the word love. Let's see where we are on time. I can get it to open. And this is a really quick process. I want to grab a couple of paint brushes and some water. And I'm going to use the gray, sort of the gray color and the pink color on these. So just give a little spray of water. And dip it in water. Um, forever ago, one of the first things I ever saw Jennifer do on a video is this right here. And I have, I have loved this little technique that she did. And the idea of being able to use the chalk edgers um, ever since I saw her do it. So this is something that um, I actually learned from Jennifer. So that's, that's something else that don't you love that we all get to kind of kind of teach each other so Jennifer one more time thank you for this little technique um, love the chalk edgers and this just makes so much sense to be able to just grab them and um, use them and what I'm doing I'm just going with the gray all over I'm just sort of just smearing the gray over the entire angel its face its wings it's the letter just kind of all over you just want to you want to add the ink and that's on all all four of these this is a really really quick process if you have some white showing that's fine um, looks a little more distressy to kind of have a little bit of white showing as well so don't worry if you do just kind of go in and, and get him as much as you can to add a little bit more I do I think of Jennifer all the time when I when I do this because that video has got thousands of views now on YouTube. It made Jennifer a celebrity because it was so good. So just continue to kind of cover this. Real, real, real quick. And if, if you've got one darker or lighter or whatever, um, just grab a little extra and sort of pounce it on there. I'm going to grab a, a wipe here and kind of kind of wipe this up. I'm going to have to get a paper towel too because it's wet. But let's just kind of wipe this up. I want to give these a quick dry. Just make sure you got all this covered. Let's give it a quick dry because we're going to also add some of the pink to their wings. And you can kind of see as you're drying where you've missed. And the best part about the chalk edgers is you can go in and re-wet them. And they are pliable again. And they will sort of move around um, if you add a little more water. So if you get it where you don't want it, or if you didn't get enough, or if you got too much, or whatever, just add some more water. So just kind of fan these out. I'm going to clean my brush just a little bit. 
I'm going to grab the pink. And this is just the dark colored pink. This is the vintage pink color of the chalk edger. And these are Prima's little chalk edgers. I think I said that, but just kind of wet your paintbrush. And I'm using kind of a small paintbrush so that and I don't want a lot of water because I want this pretty dark. Just kind of paint just, just the wings. Can you kind of see what I'm doing? I'm just painting the wings. And that's on all of them. Since this is on my, or since the photo I used is my grandbaby daughter, I, um, I did their little wings pink. But if you do a boy page, you could always paint the little wings blue. They would be adorable. They, the cherubs look like little boys, but since they're on my grandbaby's page, they have pink wings. So, they have to embrace their femininity, I guess, because I'm painting their little wings pink. You can see, and I love to do this too. Um, and the best part about being able to do this is you can't make a mistake because if you get it where you don't want it or if you don't like it, water will remove it. So you can just take it right back off and start over. Okay, so that's that's about that about it for that so wipe this away okay now we can start building our building our page lay these to the side kind of do all our prep work ahead and then we're ready to to embellish so first thing we're going to do is grab those papers that we cut from the center and we are going to use them to uh, crop behind our photo. I'm going to use the striped paper and the solid pink paper. So what I want to do is just, I'm going to take my scissors and just kind of eyeball this. I want to do it about, go ahead and measure my, my photo is a, let's see, it's a three and a half by two and a half inch photo. So we want to do these, and I could go ahead and use the trimmer just for time. So I'm not guessing at this. Let's just go ahead and do these two inches by. We'll straighten this up on the stripe first. Kind of do these um, maybe three by four. Got something stuck here. Maybe a three by four cut. So let's See. Turn this around. Let's do it maybe three by four. Okay, that's going to be our, our little stripe. And then we'll take our solid pink and do it. Just a little bit smaller, not a lot smaller, but just a little smaller. Kind of straighten up one of our edges because you know we just chopped these out a few minutes ago. So give ourselves two good straight edges. And they don't have to be straight edges. You can kind of chop these out or whatever you want to do. Do this like two and three quarters. Just going to do it like a quarter of an inch smaller by three and three quarters. And then we'll have our two and a half by three and a half inch photo added there. I'm not going to do a photo tonight on our second one, but um, you can kind of get the idea. I'm going to grab the brown ink again and ink our edges. And I need a, I need cardboard, and I'm hoping I put some close to me because y'all know I don't I don't do pop dots, or I always have to have cardboard. So I may have to go grab a box. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is kind of build this up. Where's my cardboard? Let me, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, I'm going to have to grab a box. Y'all bear with me one minute, kind of looking to see where in the world I put my box. Oh, there it is. Aha! I actually did have a piece ready, so y'all know I just kind of use box. 
just want to kind of cut this piece out. First thing I'm going to do is add some right behind this back piece here. And then between these layers, I'm not going to add any. I'm just going to kind of put these together like so. So we kind of got that popped up. Going to grab our, where did I put it? I'm going to grab our chipboard flourish if I can find where I laid it to dry. Okay, we're going to layer. A layer of flourish back here. I'm going to just add just a little glue in a couple of areas. And y'all know I'm using the Fabri Tac. Um, it's going to dry clear and you're going to lose a few beads, but that's okay. Just kind of lay your, lay your chipboard little piece down. And I love the shape of this flourish. Just kind of lay that down right there. I'm not really sure why that's Intruding, but we got that right about there and then on top of it I want to kind of move my my cardboard over just a little so that it's resting kind of on the on the chipboard and the oh and you know what I just totally forgot a step totally forgot a step y'all gotta grab my gotta grab my ribbon so what I'm gonna do is just add a little glue this is some um, the hug snug seam binding and I'm just going to kind of use a little glue to kind of stick it in behind there cut it off down here and again we're going to add a little glue we're just going to kind of glue it under our first layer don't want to go in behind the other layers and use my scissors to kind of get that under there and get that even and again, this is just one more little detail that we, we're going to have here. I like layers. I like texture. I like details. And I know y'all do too. So this is just one more way to, to get those little details. You're just going to add a little glue under there and stick it down. It, and it, it adheres and stays really good. So kind of offsetting this just a little bit to the left and then kind of closer to the bottom. Um didn't really want this to go right across the center. I don't really like anything right in the middle. Um, I'm sort of asymmetrical, I guess, that way. I just, I see things like more asymmetrical than I do even. So go back. We still got our glue kind of on our chipboard. So just sort of lay that down. And I'm just kind of centering that kind of in about an inch and a half or so off the edge there then we'll go back in now with our photo and add some glue to the back offset these just a little bit don't like anything real straight kind of offset these and we're going to kind of roll these up as well and you can roll them as little or as or not at all if you don't want to roll them that's totally okay too um, and what I'm going to do when I add my photo, I'm going to actually add a piece of cardboard to the photo as well. You can see there's a piece of cardboard back there. And in fact, I might need to add the photo so that I can show you how I'm going to do the, um, the title. So let me grab, let me see if I can grab a picture. I might can just use this photo right here. I have plenty of little photos of my sweetie girl so I can just grab a different one and this one she's wearing a little white sweater so this one this one matches pretty well and I do them all kind of wallet sized so the size of this is going to be fine to match um, leave a little bit of a white edge showing there just kind of even these out Okay. So what I'm going to do is add a piece of 
paper behind our photo first. I don't like the cardboard to touch the actual photos. So I'm going to add just a little piece of pattern paper back there. And then I'm going to grab a, another chunk of this cardboard. Just going to kind of build this up. And I'm not even looking at the chat, y'all. You know, you know I can't read it anyway. So if somebody needs me or has a question or um, needs to tell me to speak up or speed up or whatever. I don't know how close we are to time. I'm sure it's getting close, but this is going to be a pretty fast process from here. So just kind of add our photo right about there. And it's just kind of popped up off the, the page really nicely. Next thing I'm going to do is grab our flowers. And I used several different several different kinds of flowers. Um, I use these, but I do have a few strays here that I can grab. And then I even have a little baggie of flowers. Um, flowers are all over everything in my room. So I um, have tons of flowers. I've also got this little, this little fussy cut floral piece that I cut from one of the papers. So I'm just going to kind of ink it up a little bit with some pink ink. What I want to do is go in right here, and I'm going to add it right in behind this area here um, kind of know where I want that so I'm going to add it there and um, then I'll go in with the with the rest of my flowers and something like this you can add later I don't know why I just sort of knew I wanted it up in that corner um, and I only had one so I'm just going to build the rest of it with flowers and mainly these I love these flowers they are some of my all-time favorites number five six four four three eight these are primas um, they were with the uh, Fairy Rhymes collection, um, pretty old collection. I think you can still find them in places. I love them because you can kind of open them out and um, fan them out and, you know, kind of use them that way. I just kind of cut the stems off. And this this is going to be about, sort of about doing the bouquets for these flowers. You can kind of see for layering, these are really good because you can get different shapes and when you're doing the layering process, you do kind of want um, you kind of want different shapes and uh, sizes. You want you know different shades of since this is like a pink cluster, you want different shades of pink. And um, I'm just kind of this is kind of a tone on tone pink and kind of cream. But I um, just want to grab one more. I think I just well I think I used four, so I'm going to cut a couple of these out and um, add these but you can kind of see just going to kind of fan these move them around and I went in this was the first one the first actual flowers that I added so I put those kind of where I wanted them and then built the rest of the bouquet kind of around that so you see and you may may need to kind of I'm using the bigger scissors as I get to the thicker stem just kind of add them kind of like that and I may even go in with one more you can see you can just kind of see as you're building um, what you might need kind of open these out I hope I'm staying in camera I'm just kind of opening these out and bending bending them kind of like that I'm gonna add that right about there right about there maybe I want to go under the photo here you want to kind of do them in different layers so what I'm going to do is just add a little glue add a little glue and I always kind of play with these and build these and then go in and add the glue kind of last after I kind of got everything since I've done this ahead I kind of know where I'm going and what I want to do so um that's why I'm just adding the glue as I add the layers and also for time for time as well so we don't run out of time kind of add that there next one I want to add is one from this package here just want to get kind of this medium color here you can see this one this is number five five eight four one three 
these just have really pretty centers. I'm going to add a little glue to the back of that. I'm going to kind of add this one right here to kind of bring our cluster together. Kind of right there. This is not sticking real good, so I'm going to add a little bit more glue. Um, flower clustering is probably, um, I think, the most fun thing to do for me. Um, because there's just so many options and ways you can do it and flowers are just so pretty so but I still kind of like the I kind of like the the natural flow I don't just like a, 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 a wad of flowers I kind of like them clustered in more of a natural um, type stream or bouquet type style so um, that's why I kind of like different sizes and different shades of color so just kind of dump these out and grab a few sizes and this may not be exactly what we did with the with the other one but it'll be close going to take our little pink rose here and i wanted to kind of move the white across the page so we we'll add a little pink one there just kind of tuck it in and you can kind of bend them and and reposition them open them out or close them whatever it takes to kind of get them in and around. I don't I don't have the number for these little polka dotted ones. Um, these were new from Prima from I think Summer CHA and they were just different variations of these and then these are kind of from my stash. These are sort of an older flower I just kind of had and I'm sure we all kind of just have flowers in our in our stash. Just just grab them and um, use them for, for size and and tones and shades and um, just kind of just kind of have fun with them. So this one here I want to kind of tuck under there and make sure you're going in and out of your layers as well. Keeping them all kind of going up and down and um, not in one level spot. That sort of helps with your bouquet as well too. I'm kind of trying to look to see what I did. So I'll at least get them a little more a little cohesive to, to what I did before. But Anyway, like I said, you can always change it up some. Just want to kind of raise these up and add another little rose right under here. And you can see that's just still just kind of flowing, kind of straight down. I want to add a few more of these small ones. And I've got lots of different ones and lots of different shades. So flowers are something that you that you hoard forever because you never know when you might need a little white one or a little pink one or um, so you just want to be sure that you hold on to them and I'm going to add probably this little one right here kind of under the top. I want to raise this chipboard up just a little bit so I want to kind of add it under here and fill in where I don't have color up under the little the little chipboard area so that that bouquet continues to kind of move around on that side near where we added the little paper flower. I'm just going to kind of lift the chipboard and add it right on under there. So you can kind of see these are not real visible, but they are peeking out. And in person, they make quite a statement. So you just kind of want to keep kind of tucking those in. And I'm just kind of looking to see what I did to make sure I'm Kind of doing the same thing. I want to kind of pull this one out just a little bit to give that a little more cohesion there. Um, but I think that is going to be, as far as flowers that I'm going to add, I think that's going to kind of do it right there. So I'm um, just going to kind of lay these to the side. Next thing I want to work on is our title. And I've got a few little, um, got a few little of these little tickets or little stamps or whatever you want to call these little things here. Um, just kind of want to add them to the side here next to the photo for just a little bit more. Pull our picture out just a little bit. Just kind of add those right about there. Just for some more color, more more pattern, more just more, more, more. I think that's the word. Just more. It just is helpful to have more. Just going to add those in there. 
got one more that I want to add kind of at the bottom here, kind of under, under my little flower area here, just to kind of bring that down. And like, it's not going to show a lot, but it is going to show a little. So, and we are losing a few beads, but that's okay. If you lose more than you like, go back in and add some more. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add our add our title, and um, just going to kind of, I, I like, again, I like layering even titles, and um, I like adding a little interest when we do those, so these kind of stack up pretty well. You kind of, kind of smush them together and stack them up. Can you see kind of how I've done that? I'm going to start on top of the photo. And then one's going to kind of tuck right under. And then I'm stacking the V on top of the E and the O. Just kind of stacking them. I'm going to add a little fabric tack. And that's going to be our that's going to be our title. So just add a little glue. I'm kind of using my ribbon here as a guide. Having a little of the ribbon kind of show up under. And I'm just going to kind of tuck this right up under these layers. Just right up under them. I have a little bit of the ribbon showing from under the from underneath. So add a little glue. This is a little tricky. So I'm going to add the glue to the V and kind of turn it over to wait for a minute. Add a little behind the E. And then I'm going to kind of add these at the same time so that I don't get glue where I don't need it. So add those right about there. And it's just a cute way to do your title. It just adds a little bit of a little bit of interest, I guess, to it. It just makes it look really cute, too. So next thing I want to do is go in on this and also add a few beads. So I'm going to take the glossy accents. And just in a few places, I'm going to add some, like on this wing. To kind of make these letters sort of more cohesive, I'm going to add a little bit to that area. And a little bit here across the E. Just um, You don't want to do the same thing on all of them. Kind of see what I did. I added a little bit to the wing here. And then you just want to get your beads. And again, we'll get our felt. We've already got a few kind of falling off our page. So just grab your beads. Kind of tilt them onto your felt here. And they'll just fall right down on the felt. And um, you can, they're kind of all behind here, so just sort of, just sort of tap away, and they'll they'll fall away, and then line it back up. And you may just have to kind of, you may have to tip it over. Once the letters are good and dry, you can kind of tip it over and remove the beads that don't need to be there. So that'll work because they're they're shifting just a little bit because they're still wet. So, if you don't like right where they're positioned, just kind of wipe them away. Use your paintbrush and kind of wipe them away or, or whatever you need to. So, you can kind of see how that is there. The last thing we're going to do is go in with our butterflies that we, that we prepared earlier. And we're just going to glue them down in a few places on our flourish. So, and the beads to the centers, when you add the beads to the beads on the little chipboard flourish they just almost help look like they're in flight because the beads are kind of touching the beads and um, just a really pretty look just going to add a few a few little butterflies in a few areas and the fabric tack does a really good job at holding these down where you need them Okay, so that that is about it. So I don't think we need our don't think we need our last one. I did do one more thing with the um, with the Viva Decor pen. Um, I used the light Carmen red, and I just went in a few places and added a few dots. Also, my original page I used the word my. It said my love, so you can do that as well. But just going with the Viva Decor and do just a few little dots of color um, in a few places. 
kind of dotted on the butterflies just a little on a few of them um, and if you do this the nice part about this is that it will just wipe away I sort of smeared my dot there but um, anyway you add a dot here and there and it just gives you a little bit of interest and it draws the tension into a few areas as well too you can use these dots to add color where you don't have color and you might need an additional color somewhere um, so that's about all I'm going to do there just add one probably here and it just kind of moves that color all around and gives again a little bit more texture so that's it that is our page so y'all can kind of see I don't know where we are on time Oh, I'm, I'm six minutes over, so let me go ahead and show you this, and um, I don't think I can stand it upright because it's going to, our, our heavy resin words are going to fall off. So let me turn you around and go ahead and pan up. If I can get you turned around and pan you up. Okay. Okay. If I can get this camera situated. I'm going to get this camera one of these days situated right, so... Thank you all so much for joining me. Don't forget, everything that I used on the page tonight, if it's still in stock, is 10% off at the Flying Unicorn store. Join Song next Wednesday night. Um, it's always a fun show with Song, so be sure and join. Um, just one more look at the page that we did. And um, we're already a little bit over, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Y'all have a great night. Thanks again, everybody, for joining me. Bye.